the first reason wasn't actually for my professional career. It's just because I grew up without speaking the Korean language. So I, uh, I wanted to go to Korea just to learn Korean and learn the culture. Because my mom's Korean and um, my father's from England, but we grew up only speaking English. So I went out there to only stay for two years and then the opportunities just came up. So after I picked up the language, then the auditions happened and I ended up staying for five years. And uh, it's been a really interesting journey. <laughs> I was never actually a model in Korea. <laughs> I just, my first job was um, a TV show, so uh, uh, I don't know, like, there, there, there are a lot of half Korean, half um, Caucasian guys that come over and they do a lot of modeling and stuff. I, I guess I wasn't blessed with that opportunity when I first <laughs> went. Um, I just read for a TV show and, and got on that first. And then because of that, um, I got to do, like, commercial work after. But, uh... I don't know. I don't know actually the the paths that everyone takes, <laughs> or what is the conventional route. I feel yeah, like I, I feel like all of us have taken pretty unconventional routes yeah. because uh, there's not many of us in Korea, so um, we're all just trying to figure out our way. <laughs> I didn't know how to take pictures at all when I started. <laughs> I, the photographers really had to work with me. <laughs> They're like, you, you know, because I well, I I mainly did live performance like theater. I did a lot of that in school, and I did a lot of sketch comedy, but. Uh, working in front of the camera, that was all in Korea. So I got used to the camera doing a TV show, but then pictures is like a whole different thing. I have a, I have mad respect for models, actually. I think they really, to be able to, you know, find the right angle and make it work, like it's actually really difficult. There were a couple that sort of stood out to me, like one of them where you were like, I'm like, is that red hair in a goatee? <laughs> or, I'm like, everyone, what? Everyone always makes fun of that. That was my real hair, actually. I. Uh, when real I, color? That that was okay. The story behind that is when I read for the role, my hair was black, and the first thing the director said when he looked to me was, "You look too Asian for this role," because it was actually supposed to be an American. And my manager immediately stepped in and said, "No, we can dye his hair. We can dye his eyebrows. We'll make <laughs> him look completely American. Don't worry." And so he just kind of sat there like, "Hmm, okay." And then I did the whole audition, and afterwards he is still like. Still look really Korean, you know? <laughs> and he's like, "No, really, we can dye it." So I grew my hair out, and that's that's my real win, hair, huh? Yeah, you, it's like you're either too Korean or too white. It's like, <laughs> oh no. So what what is that? that? So the the show was called Changing One, and that was in 2010 for SBS. And uh, the story is there's a very uh, famous hospital in Korea called Yonsei Severance Hospital. And when that hospital started, it was called Changing One, which was started by this doctor named Dr. Horace Allen, who was the first American doctor missionary to bring Western medicine to Korea in the 1880s. So I had the honor of playing Dr. Allen in this wow, show, yeah. and, and it was, it was, just the most amazing experience for me. Not not only because it had only been about two and a half years since I'd moved to Korea when I I was performing that role. Um, as I was learning about the Korean language, because I had to speak 1880s Korean, and as I was learning about the culture, so was my character, because it was, it was his process as well. So it was really cool for me. It just, it found, I found Dr. Allen at the exact time in my life that I could really do him in ways that I, I didn't even think I could, because as I was picking yeah. up the Korean culture, so was he in the story. So um, it's a perfect, yeah. thing to fall back on you that experience yeah, yeah. and uh, and I learned so much about the Korean culture and we shot all over the countryside um, it was just a really amazing what 10 months yeah for me I didn't I never expected when I acted in Korea that I would be able to connect with the Korean audience on an emotional level and so once people started saying to me wow I really felt that scene or something when at the time, like, my Korean was not even that great. I, I realized that, you know, as long as I'm connecting with people, I, I don't really mind where it is. But it's interesting, when you speak to people in their native tongue, there are these little things that you can get to know someone in a different way. Like, I never was able to get to know certain things about my grandmother that now I, I'm able to do, which which means so much to yeah. me. It's just, it's... There's so many things, but, you know, stories from the past, how they explained things, 
it's just you can feel it a lot more. So it's yeah, it's, that meant a lot to me.